play for you. Um, Padraig Lini Ulchan really almost needs no introduction uh, to, to people here in Ireland, but for those of you who come from outside of Ireland, you need to know that she's one of our most respected singers, and she's that rare singer that she's a scholar singer. Her scholarly work uh, is amazing. Um, her PhD work, uh, her book, if you, uh, which is in the library, which we should get at, uh, in fact I'll grab it even here. If you haven't seen this book, A Hidden Ulster, uh, this is her sort of magnum opus, which is uh, just a, a delight and very important, not only for singing, but also for uh, harping in Ireland. So she documents the music of Southeast Ulster, uh, the region of Oriel. And uh, Darren Bacay, the fiddle player, I'm very thrilled to have you here for the first time, Darren, uh, is from uh, uh, Mayo Bridge in South County Down. And uh, he works with Paul Zergy. Well, you're, you're amazing to me in your own right because he's not only a fiddle player, he plays the piano, he plays the organ. He's a, 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 a musician, not only in the traditional mode, but also in art music mode. So that's very interesting to somebody like me. He's interested in all sorts of things, shano singing, plain chant, and all sorts of connections uh, between that and instrumental slower performance. So I, I'm really delighted that you're here, Darren. And then of course we have our own Sylvia Crawford, mm. whom uh, many of you here will know. Um, so uh, Sylvia uh, teaches and plays early Irish harp, but also uh, fiddle and piano. And she's currently uh, finishing off an MA by research at Dundalk Institute of Technology. And some of her MA research uh, centres around the 18th century harper Patrick Quinn from Armagh. And Sylvia herself is from Armagh. So this is a wonderful, this, this area of research that she's doing in her own locality. Um, so I'm really thrilled. They all work together and they're all represented on the wonderful, uh, or, is it Oriel Arts? Oriel Arts. Arts which is a new prize winning <laughs> website which documents the uh, music of Southeast Ulster and which is an adjunct to um, Paul Dergeen's book and which he has put you know, hours, days, weeks, months and years of her life into. And it's a really fabulous website uh, with you know, written music, with information and with sound files. So you'll be able to hear all three on orielarts.com if you enjoy this evening. So would you please give them a warm welcome. Sylvia Reach, August Evor Mask, Gil Cunny, August Gordon Mean, and Vincent Corley. Uh, I'm delighted to be here, and I, I mean, I could talk about oral music and song at Nausman at, at great length, but I keep, must remember that this is a concert and it's not a lecture. So I'm going to try and keep the introductions and the information uh, as, as concise as I can. Um, some people ask me where is oral? Well, those of you who are visitors, think of Ireland as the head. And Oriel begins at the nape of the, of the head, into the Carlingford Loch. That is the only boundary you can see. There are no real boundaries to Oriel because the boundaries change over, over uh, decades uh, and centuries. But really, roughly, it would be from Armagh to Drogheda over to Carter Cross and Monaghan and over to the coast. And for 200 years, there was a, a continuous cultivation of poetry and harp and song in that area. And some people might ask, what is distinctive about the area? Because it's not an Irish-speaking area. Of course, there are many Irish speakers there, but it's not a Gaeltacht area. Uh, and what was it about was distinctive or different about Oriel? And it was the extent to which scribes wrote down the literature uh, of, of, the, of the area of poets such as Seamus Dal McCourt, the Padro Darnin, Art McCoy, and others. And then, towards the period of the turn of the 1900s, when Irish was dying out as a community language, uh, uh, collectors sort of converged on the area and began uh, writing down material, including some were interested in, in uh, manuscript music, some were interested in, in language, some were interested in literature, some were interested in cameras, and some were interested in recording equipment. So they all came in, did their bit, and then the material got scattered. So basically my work was is to, to, to bring it together, make sense of that material, and also to build up a repertoire and a canon of song from the area, because it was one of the area's richest in song. So that is it in a nutshell. So tonight you're going to hear some of the wealth of material. The harpers work with the poets, the poets work with the harpers. Uh, they sang at each other's funerals, they, they, they sang, they worked together, collaborated when there was a gentry or like for 
example, Carolyn coming to visit Oriel, uh, the poet James Dan McCourtha, and Padraig MacGilla Inven, the father of Patrick Linden, mentioned by Arthur O'Neill, uh, worked to collaborate together to welcome Carolyn and Padraig MacGilla Inven composed a song for Bridget Cruz. As, so there was a lot of um, <coughs> interaction between them. So I will give you little glimpses of that. But we're going to start with a piece of harp music that was collected by Bunting uh, from Padraig, that Padraig Machagilla in the song, and we will call him Patrick Linden, the Rusaska name that features in the Bunting collection. Uh, it was collected from, from Patrick Linden, who was very poor. Uh, his father was a man of means, but seemingly when he died, a lot of his wealth, whatever happened. Patrick Linden, his son, was very poor. And this is, in, this is the, when you go into orielarts.com, the opening piece of music on the landscape of Oriel is this piece played by Sylvia. It's called Sealy Kelly, or Sheelini Kelly and Sally Kelly, various names that are just, um, so Sealy Kelly. Down. So County Down is very close to, to, to Oriel, it's on, the, it's on the borders. 
And um, this next piece was written down from a harper from County Down called James Duncan. And Bunting remarks that he didn't play the old Irish airs, but played new music. And it's an interesting remark, and I believe this next piece belongs to that category of what Bunting might have uh, referred to as new music. It was songs written in the song a form, sonata form, and with a certain metric system. And the key to interpreting songs in Irish, uh, with or without accompaniment, lies in the metre of the song and the assonance that, and the, the rhyming pattern in the songs. So this song was printed by Bunting in the, uh, the first piece in his 1809 um, collection. It's called The Charming Fair Ellie, you know, Ellie Gan Hewan. Now, the air is played often by instrumentalists, but uh, Don O'Sullivan married it to a set of words, but in fact, the correct set of words were in another collection, which I remarried back to the, to the air. And it was written by Seamus Bowler Cork from County Louth, and there's a reference that, that all of Courtney, which Seamus Bowler Cork is, Airs were composed by Patrick Lindley's father, Father Macula Inman. So this is a collaboration between Macula Inman and uh, Seamus Van uh, Ali Gyalcune. There's also a reference to, in the song, the words to uh, Ellie O'Carroll, which is not a person but a place, uh, which includes parts of Ormond and uh, Offaly. And the O'Carrolls came from, or the Carrolls were strong, were chieftains in this area as well as up in County Louth. So, Duhia Ela is Ellie O'Carroll. <coughs>
Darren and Irv weren't able to introduce themselves, but they asked me to do the introductions to that. And that piece that Darren has just played is called Gurkha Pien of Ancha. It's an iconic piece associated with the oral tradition. Though it was set to the poem by Pablo Udarni, who died in 1769, it was set around 1907 by a county loud man, and he, he took this, the air from the tradition. But he made a very good marriage. By the way, the original, one of probably the original air is also in the Bunton collection, which we intend to resurrect. Um, so, um, being very, uh, Pablo Udarni was from Forkhill in County Arm Armagh, and very, just around the corner in Dunguli, there was a man or a scribe who wrote down lots of um, manuscripts in Irish, wrote down in a very small book a collection of tunes, and now they're called the Patrick McGahan Collection. They're actually reproduced. The only place they're reproduced is in the appendix of the Hidden Ulster. But I thought it was worth actually bringing them out so that people could see a collection of tunes. And um, there's about over 107 maybe tunes in it, and um, there's some of them very, very interesting. Uh, so this, this, these two pieces now that, uh, that we're going to play are it's called Sprig of Shillelagh, which was first published, I think, around 1740. It was also called Black Joke, I think, as a, as a song. And the other piece was St. Patrick's Day, and that was played in Waterloo, from my quick research on Google, in 1815. <laughs> um, but what's interesting about this is Patrick Quinn, uh, from whom the first piece, Sally Kelly, that, that uh, Sylvie played, um, no, he did, he got came from Patrick Linden. But Patrick Quinn, one of the harpers of, of Boreal, also was a fiddle player and used to make his money at merry makings and wakes. So he would have had a repertoire of tunes and he was very pleased that he fixed the, the tune St. Patrick's Day to suit the harp. So these two tunes are the Spring Shillelagh and St. Patrick's Day from that collection.
about 1746 and died about 1814, right? Something like that, right? Just to give you a, a context for, for that. And I should have mentioned that Patrick Bennett and McGannon's tunes were written down in 1817. And also the book was written down 200 years or 120 years later was a repertoire of a piper in the area. The tunes, unfortunately, weren't written down, but the repertoire was written down. And it makes for a very interesting reading as well. And those tunes were included in the piper's repertoire. So it shows the tunes surviving in the time they were written down to time later. Uh, we're going back to Bunting now and Le Haber, collected from Patrick Quinn again. Uh, you'll hear the name Patrick Quinn a number of times this evening because uh, Sylvia has a special interest in Patrick Quinn as he came from Portadown, or he was associated with Portadown. And he was taught by Patrick Linden, whom, whom we heard earlier uh, about earlier. And so it's all interconnected and uh, Sylvia has a particular interest in re uh, uh, restoring and renewing the, the music of Patrick Quinn. So the next piece is Loch Aber, also called the Lament of Limerick, and it was written down about 1800 by Bunting from Patrick.
Gail Hune, is an example of a sort of courtly song uh, written by poet Harper uh, in order to get uh, to woo maybe or to impress the woman of the house and that they would get clothing and food and uh, maybe some money for the night. Um, but the next song now is not is not is an example of one of the songs of the people, um, and it's very very different. I'm sure you'll notice the difference. And um, this song is called it's again it's, it's only found in the oral tradition, um, though, though there are elements of it in the Kenyan tradition. And it tells of a woman who had twelve children and she they all died before her, something that would not have been unusual with childhood illnesses. And she loses her reason when she goes into the wake house of her youngest child. So um, it's not keening as such, but it's in the it's a, a lamentation in that tradition. I won't sing the full. It's a long song. I won't sing the full one of it here. But the translation of the first and the last verse is she's singing to her daughter Nelly. Fair Nelly, may God bless you. May the sun and the moon bless you. May the stars and the heavens bless you. And for the angels in the heaven bless you, as your mother, who has a reason for you, blesses you. The sun and the moon are moving in shadows. Teardrops fall from the morning skies. The, uh, the, uh, the clouds will be in a cloak of sorrow, uh, and, and, and I, will, I will cry until I see you again. Something to, that's the gist of it. <coughs> Must write it down. Ah. Uh. 
Marathna, Rokua, again in the Bunting collection written down from Patrick Quinn about 1800. And there's interesting comments, not in Bunting, but in uh, other, other sources, folklore sources, about what constituted a, a Marathna or a Kua or a Thuruv, Thuruv. And some of them are for, for uh, extracting tears, and other were, others didn't extract tears. They were you know, called dry crying, pieces called dry crying. So that, that last piece that uh, Sylvia played uh, was probably taken from a, a, a keening section. Uh, so we're going to continue now with another song, um, which is again unique to Oriel, and it's, uh, it's very appropriate that we sing it today, because in Irish the name for the All Ireland is Creel Nehera, the branch of Ireland. And it goes back to a song, um, which is not an awful lot has been written about it, but the, uh, a balthana, or ritual, telling your customs, of carrying the branch, symbolising Flora, the, the goddess of fertility, at the beginning of May, carrying the branch, decorating it, and carrying it from house to house. And each town land would have their own effigy or doll, and they would compete with who had the most beautiful doll. And uh, then they would head off up into the mountains. And this song tells of going up into the mountains to be 200 young men and 200 horses with gold bridles, and where they will have fun and sport and abundance. And then they will look for young men. And so anyway, and then they, some they mock each other as dolls, uh, but then they go home saying, we have won uh, today. We have won it every year anyway. So and it would symbolize, you could understand, that it symbolized the beauty and the fertility of the women of their own townland. So this is called the Garland song, Oran Macreeve. And um, we heard another mention yesterday to the word creeve in Scotland, which means tree. In Ireland, it's branch.
songs, ritual songs, uh, laments, uh, harpers, and now we're going to another collection of a collector, collector called Luke Donlan, who collected over 300 pieces in the same area around 1900. He was very interested in recording equipment. So he recorded tunes and he also wrote them down in manuscript. So Darren's going to play um, a hornpipe and a reed called Nelson's and Lord Kelly from that collection. It should be the music, the words of the Thumboera. 
It was also collected from the same song, which is a spinning song. It was collected from Pat Ward and Grotta by Bunting around 1800. Yeah, we don't know if Pat Ward was a harper. I assume he was. So uh, we're going to uh, do this one. And if you'd like to join in on the second line of the refrain, anybody who knows it, um, as I taught it yesterday in class. Uh, A, is it? tunes, uh, you're sure that you'd be familiar with them, the Boyne Water, which is associated with the Battle of the Boyne of 1690, and according to Alois Alois Fleischmann, the first recorded printed version was 1694, and then um, it's uh, it's also called Roscahanamuan or Marshall uh, Naboyne, 
and it's also played on the Trap of July by Orange uh, Martin Craze and Fife and Drum Band. So it's a very much a crossover tune. And the second one to finish off is called The Fairy Dance. It was first published by, in Nathaniel, by Nathaniel Gow, I think, in 1809. And very soon afterwards, in Scotland, 1809, we find it written down by a scribe in South Armagh in 1817, a very short period of time for the tune to have travelled by whatever means into the Oriel collection. And um, that is all I have to say about that. Um, for me, the Mahigabar Fad, I'll go to the Majid the Poet, as